Welcome to the Empowered Wife Podcast, where it's all about fixing your relationship without your man's conscious efforts that you feel desired and taken care of and special, even if your relationship feels completely hopeless. I'm Laura Doyle, and this is the How to Stop a Controlling Husband episode. Today, I'm going to show you what you can do if your husband is the controlling one in your relationship, and it's getting on your very last nerve. My guest, Morvana, had recently escaped a destructive relationship and found the man of her dreams, but was puzzled when some of the same patterns from that previous relationship showed up in her new marriage, which seemed to be deteriorating into lots of fights and cold wars. Had she picked the wrong man again? She made an unpleasant discovery about herself that broke open the whole mystery and started her on a journey to making her relationship safe, sweet, and satisfying again. And she's going to share exactly how she did that. Then I'll be giving out the award for the worst relationship advice of the week, which so many women have tried and failed two years to get more connection in their relationship. I did it too. Didn't work. Let's not all make the same mistake. All of that is coming up, but first, let's talk about the controlling husband cure, how to get him to stop before you smack him. If he's always telling you what to do, here's what it means. I mean, does your husband tell you how to cut an onion, how to drive, what to wear? It is no fun to have someone barking orders at you like you're incompetent, or maybe you're the kitchen elf who should do his bidding, and you've calmly asked him to just relax. Or maybe you've gotten upset about it, and he still can't seem to keep himself from telling you what to do and how to do it. It gets discouraging. Who wouldn't be defensive, right? If you knew how to get him to stop, you really would, but nothing seems to work. He just doesn't get the message, so you struggle along, feeling hurt and angry most of the time. And that was exactly Allison's situation. She just couldn't take it anymore. She left her husband because he was so controlling. She felt like a prisoner at times. And she was embarrassed when he told her how to cut the cake in front of everyone at the graduation party. So demeaning. But when I showed her an approach that she hadn't considered, she decided she had nothing to lose by trying it. And that's when everything changed. And now Allison is back with her husband. And feeling like a newlywed again. In fact, she told me that she finally understood what people meant when they said, I can't wait to spend the rest of my life with you. She was so excited. She said, that's exactly how I feel about her husband. They've been married for 20 years. And here's what I shared that helped her get there. It was the spouse fulfilling prophecy. So she had long been complaining that her husband was controlling, overbearing, possessive, He's the worst, she told me. I can't go anywhere without him giving me a bad time about it. And she had told him that he was controlling and overbearing, but she said he didn't want to change. Now, that phrase that she had repeated to him often over their 20-year relationship was an unintentional spouse fulfilling prophecy, right? It was an unwitting one where she was affirming that he was acting exactly the way she did not want him to act. Of course, he wasn't always overbearing. That's not possible. But she wasn't focused on the rare times when he was accommodating or patient or trusting. Those behaviors were not in sharp focus because you know what? They don't hurt. Hurt makes you want to blame somebody. That's just human. But blaming someone can actually extend your pain by prolonging the negative experience. You unwittingly reinforce what you don't want by focusing on it and saying it out loud. The late, great Wayne Dyer used to compare repeating negative affirmations to going on a shopping spree where you you find a lamp and, and you find a table and you find a rug that you hate. You hate the lamp and the table and the rug. And then you say, I'll take these, ship them to my house. And then when you get home, you have an ugly lamp and table and rug and you think, how did these get here? Of course, they're there because you ordered them. You focused on them. You nurtured them. You brought them home. Spouse fulfilling prophecies are just like that. When I explained this to Allison, she got it right away. And instead of focusing on the times when he was overbearing, Allison decided to focus on the times her husband was behaving in a way that served her. And she thought about what she wanted to see in him and came up with the appropriate spouse fulfilling prophecy, which was, you always see the best in me. You always see the best in me. 
but it sounded like such a ridiculous stretch that she could barely say it with a straight face. She worried that he would think she was being sarcastic or making fun of him. And that is a great measure of a spouse fulfilling prophecy. It usually feels like a barefaced lie, at least a stretch. So if you're totally uncomfortable saying it because it feels fake, that means you're on the right track. It's not what you're used to. It's something better. It takes you out of your comfort zone. And the first time Allison said her new spouse fulfilling prophecy, she was filled with fear and wondered if her husband would see her shaking and call her out for lying. But what actually happened was that Allison's husband stepped into her vision for him. He rose to the occasion and became the man he saw reflected in his wife mirror. So instead of controlling, he became admiring and trusting. And instead of possessive, he was tender and supportive. Allison was shocked. I can't believe it's the same guy, she told me. It's such a transformation. But when I found my faith in him, he found his faith in me too. So what is your unwitting spouse-fulfilling prophecy? Is it that your husband is sloppy? Or he's too harsh on the kids, or is he lazy, or is he workaholic, or he's always looking at his phone, he's a narcissist, he's having a midlife crisis, he's passive aggressive. What, what are you affirming to him? And how could you replace that affirmation that doesn't serve you with one that does? What would your new affirmation be? And does that affirmation feel like a lie? Because if it does, that's a good sign. You're going in the right direction. If you're wondering how to get started with fixing your relationship and making it shiny again, then you need a roadmap. Get six simple steps to follow that will set your relationship up for success. Discover three common mistakes that wives make trying to fix their relationship that just make things worse. When you download my free Adored Wife Roadmap, you can do that at getcherished.com. Go to getcherished.com now to get your roadmap in minutes. My guest today is Morvana, who was struggling with a lot of arguments in her second marriage that reminded her in a scary way of a toxic, self-destructive relationship and marriage that she had just ended. They were arguing, there was tension, she did not know why that was happening or how it would get better. In fact, she thought it might get worse, but instead of getting divorced... She did something completely different. She's going to share with us today how she not only fixed her relationship, she made it wonderful again. And Morvana, thank you so much for joining us on the show and being willing to share the, this story with us. Yeah, it's my pleasure to share and uh, just how powerful the skills are um, and how they've transformed my life and, and my marriage. Um, yeah, so. Um, after a divorce, I remarried and thought, you know, it's all about finding the right man. And, you know, I thought I really felt strongly. I'd found a healthy, um, partnership and, you know, this, this was the guy of my dreams. Um, and we moved in together. We got married, we moved in together and, some pattern, patterns started to, I guess, develop and it was really confusing. I found myself in arguments with this beautiful man in the car um, over mobile phone plans and um, I found myself screaming at him at the beach over something he said that I just took, you know, took badly. Um, and just the love was, it was being damaged over and over and over again. Um, and I couldn't stop this, this happening. It just felt so confusing, um, so scary. And, and this, I had a sense that it was, there was something to do with me that, that was damaging the relationship. But I also wanted to blame him and I wanted to um 
I thought it was his low self-esteem or his negativity or something wrong with him. And I, I blamed and I, I said, we should go to a counselor. You should go to a counselor. And so I was firmly in victim mode. So I really felt like a victim again. I felt like this again, I'm in this situation where my marriage is going to implode just like the, just like the first one. And I've made a horrible, horrible mistake and I should have stayed single. Um, <clears throat> but something in me, I guess the, the potent, I saw the potential in this person and, and the way he made me feel when we were dating, um, the way he made me feel courageous and like I could do anything that, that just, and the way I saw him being a father of my children for the first time, and, and he's the only man that I've ever visualized in that way. So, um, yeah, I couldn't stop thinking about how could I fix this? How can I fix it? There has to be a way, there has to be a solution. And so I just trawled all over the internet for days on end, um, looking for answers, looking for what causes distance in a relationship, what causes cold wars, you know, what causes someone to go in a different room and, and ignore me, what causes someone to uh, argue or feel criticised when I give advice about things. Um, yeah, and it all kind of boiled down to me finding Laura Doyle's article. Um, I think it's called How Control Kills the Intimacy. Um, and that article changed my life. It really did. Because as soon as I read it, I was angry. <laughs> You're angry. Yeah, I was so angry with this article. Uh, and it got me. It got re- under my skin, I guess, it just kind of made me feel, it made me look in the mirror at myself and that was uncomfortable Um, and I thought, no, I'm, no, I'm not controlling. I had no idea I was controlling and I was in complete denial when I read the article. I was just like, no, this isn't me. I'm a sweet person. I'm positive. I'm, you know, not controlling and then I just um I kept looking into it thankfully and I read the book um The Empowered Wife and yeah it just felt like this is exactly what's happening in my relationship all the things in the book all the examples even the mobile phone argument was even in the book like like we had like Myself and Laura Doyle had 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 the same argument with with our completely different husbands, and I just it was just mind blowing to read that book and realize all the things I was doing wrong. And then I just was in floods of tears for I think weeks after I read that book because I had so much remorse for just not knowing these skills, not knowing that I was squashing my man's spirit. Every time I tried to help him um, live his life, I was taking something away from him. And that was just so painful to have that revelation. Um, but, but so transformative. I just felt, okay, this is it. I found, I found the answer. So now I just need to learn everything about it um, and implement and experiment with this and hopefully I had so much hope when I read the book and found the article so that drove me forward and yeah um what did you do what did you start doing I started yeah I, I started with uh whatever you think so respect because it really and I had to do a lot of self-care. So probably self-care was the first thing that I, I really had to practice fully um, to give myself you, the energy. How did you do that? How did you do self-care? Um, so I just joined a gym. Like within 
a week or two of reading the book and seeing that article and signing up for the the portal where all the videos are I was like yeah I can I can see now just how much energy a marriage takes and and to practice these skills that are completely alien to me I I quickly I kind of really very much realized I'm going to need a lot of self-care I'm going to I'm probably not going to be able to do a full-time job and and like really nail this like really fully transform to to save this marriage so I rejuggled my whole life really um because I was so committed I just want want, wanted to give this my everything so I I started studying um the skills I I went part-time so I did I cut down to two days a week and then um, on my days off I would just relax I'd watch the trees in the wind blowing in the wind and um just do lots of swimming um and then by joining the gym I was taking myself away from the home in the evenings um uh, gave us some space between each other to have some moments where we missed each other which mm. which I think really helped and then I started doing my art classes uh, which is one of my greatest pas- passions um, is drawing and painting. So I went along to the art classes on a Saturday and that was three hours of time apart from my husband. Before that, when we moved in, we never really spent any time apart. So this was quite new, um, quite uh, bold um, to spend those three hours every week away from him. He was quite shocked. He was nervous. He thought I was going to meet someone on the course or, you know, he was very scared that I was making these bold, you know, very sweeping changes to to the schedule, to our normal everyday life. Um, and I knew there was a higher purpose. I knew that it was worth worth it to keep going and keep doing the self-care. And then when I came home, I was able to be relaxed and calm and I was happy for first for the first time in a long time I was doing something I enjoy so that really you know that really filled me up and like the my whole life I've always felt like I didn't deserve to do the things I enjoy and wash you know um I always put my desires and needs at the bottom of the the list and everyone else you know would steamroller me into doing what they wanted to do and so this is me taking back my power as not just to help my marriage but as a woman as a as an individual I was taking back with the self-care um who I was and and what I wanted to be as a person because I yeah being an artist and creating things and writing is my complete passion it always has been so I finally dedicated my time to that. And then I, when I came home from, from doing the, those kind of things and swimming and, and filling myself up with um, happy feelings, uh, when I came home, I had the energy to just let go of him, let go of his life, let go of his decisions, let go of all of his problems, all of his, all the good and all the bad in my husband. So saying whatever you think and I, I respect your opinion, I respect your um, intelligence, you know what to do, please go ahead and you go for whatever you think is right in every situation. And that was every situation. So I just kept saying whatever you think, I trust your thinking, I know you'll do what's right for the, our family. And I just, it was like a record on repeat, really. I was like, <laughs> maybe he's just going to get sick of this soon and just kind of kind of say, what are you, what's going on with you? <laughs> but he didn't. So that was surprising. How did he respond? Considering. Because before that, I was like, you need to, uh, you need to change your job and you need to approach your career in a whole different way. And, you know, I even, I even redesigned his um, LinkedIn profile and for him and I was like his career manager, I was his psychotherapist, I was 
uh, I was also his uh, home decor uh, managing director, you know. <laughs> I had a lot of jobs. I, oh I had a lot of jobs. And when I first moved in, I remember this, this great story, right? So I had, I got some bin liners and I dragged my husband to one of his piles of, of junk, I, I would call it. Um, so he, he'd be devastated that I said junk. But anyway, so I got the bin liner and I'm, I'm, I got my husband next to me and I'm like, right, let's, let's clean this up. Let's, what is this? And each item, I was taking each item off the pile and asking him, what is the purpose of this item? Do you need it or do you not? Have you used it in the last few years or not? Right, it's going in the bin. It's going in so the you bin. say there was some tension in your relationship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just can't think why. I don't know. I mean, I, well I who knows I mean it's <laughs> curious isn't it no way <laughs> yeah so oh my gosh so that was kind of the norm um before the skills um and I thought I was being just so helpful I thought that was what a wife should do I really did I was genuinely thinking that I was genuinely thinking that that's my duty to babysit him and you know yeah so, yeah I think yeah. a lot of us think that right I don't think you're the only one yeah yeah, yeah a lot of us uh have that expectation that we're gonna yeah dress him yeah. and tell him how to eat and things like that <laughs> <laughs> yeah so respect was was the first thing that needed a lot of a lot of work um for me to learn how to respect a man I mean I don't think yeah, I've never, I've never really learned that before. So that was all new. So, and then um, relinquishing control was huge for me. Um, and I started to realise I have a lot of control issues. So, because when I think back to my first marriage, the wedding, um, I wouldn't even let anyone do my hair because I was so controlling because I just couldn't stand the thought of someone um, of losing control of, of the outcome of, of what my hair would look like on, on my wedding day. And my ex-husband's wife, uh, sorry, my ex-husband's mother was a hairdresser. She was, oh. a, yeah, my mother-in-law was a hairdresser. And I, <laughs> you know, for, for 20 years or something. And I, I, denied her that that joy of of um making me look look beautiful on the day and I took that from her and I I feel terrible now because now I realize it came from fear it came from control it came from me not wanting to be to get hurt and um very disconnecting she never I don't think she ever really forgave me for that I could feel that there, there was after that the the relationship there was, there was something missing. Um, so I really regret that. Um, but more than that, I, in my first marriage, I was too scared to let him manage the finances, so I I controlled that. I was too scared to let him um, cook or go grocery shopping because, of course, he would forget something important that I needed of course you would so I controlled all of that and I I controlled but even we started buying property um and one time he said oh I'm really I'm not very good at filling forms in from that day forward I filled every single form in for him as if he was a child that couldn't even you know fill a form in it's um yeah so no wonder it was toxic and and unhealthy. And the more the more controlling I was of him, the more toxic the relationship got. And the more he acted out, and the more he more aggressive he was, and the more angry he was. And uh, he just never seemed satisfied. I could feel this hole within him that wasn't being filled. And I think that that hole was respect he desperately wanted me to respect him and I never did 
um, which is just, just awful. So, yeah, I have a lot of, a lot of uh, guilt about that looking back. So here in this marriage, at least, I know now what, what a man needs. Women, women need to feel loved. Men need to feel respected just in equal amounts. So, um, yeah, that's, that's a huge shift for me. It's been, it's been amazing to see my husband, my current husband, my view of him was this weak person who couldn't even tidy up his own home to someone who's now been promoted has got a new job, uh, now earns twice as much money as as he used to earn. Wow. And goes out and buys kayaks for for us to have fun with, um, takes charge of every situation, dresses in expensive shirts now and suits, and I hear him on the phone to people at work and he sounds like, he sounds like the chief of, of the universe. His confidence is astronomical now and he just feel he just looks like an alpha male now. Compared. Is this the same guy that was so insecure? <laughs> or, I mean Yeah, yeah, it's the same guy. It's the same guy, which I doesn't even make sense to me. It's even difficult to wrap my head around who he used to be. And here he is now. It's just. So, Ravana, what is your relationship like now? Oh, wow. It's it's so precious on an everyday level. So I feel I feel like we have this emotional safety that's so deep that just just uh, last week, I was able to share with him one of my darkest secrets from the past um, that literally no one no one else knows. My family, no nobody else knows this secret. Um, but I was I felt so safe um, to be vulnerable with him that I was able to share that uh, very difficult, deep, challenging uh, secret from my past. Um, And he was like my hero. He held me in his arms and cried with me. Um, He he wanted to protect me and he just felt, I felt so loved in that moment um, that nothing else compares to the love that we we've found so yeah I think (laughs) yeah Yeah. it's it's moving right because it's what we all dream will have that we'll feel loved yeah yeah and I just stare at him at night time and I'm just so in love with him at this point um and he's he'll he'll do anything for me like he's just installed air conditioning in our home, uh, even though he doesn't really need it himself, he's he's very, you know, he's a tough guy. He doesn't doesn't mind the heat, um, but yeah, because he knows it will make me happy. He's <laughs> he's he's pulled out all the stops to make it comfortable for me, um, and that that just just oh, it melts my heart. Yes, yes. Yeah. Melts my heart. It's just gives me goosebumps. What about the toxic arguments and fights? No, no. uh, So none of none of that happens. Um, There's no, not even a single moment where we're in conflict. Really? Yeah, it's quite extraordinary, right? I think every every relationship has its challenges, right? There's no bickering at all. Nothing, 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 nothing caused by, by him. And it's interesting, um, the, 
the only cause of the arguments even in the past is is something I've realized it was all me um it was all me controlling you know whether or not we had two spoons in the cutlery drawer and whether or not we had net curtains or <laughs> you know it, it, all the arguments started with me trying to control something out of some sort of fear that I wasn't going to get what I wanted or I wasn't going to be taken care of or I wasn't he was going to do what I feared the most and that that's he was going to not love me the way I needed so my defense was always control for that if I control this then he'll he'll love me and he'll take care of me if I try you know try and um argue or lo- create um a conversation about logic about why he should why he should care that's that's what I used to do and it, it just always got me the opposite result <laughs> so infuriating yeah yeah just oh so infuriating didn't didn't never never worked never if worked you- if you could go back in time and talk to yourself from the bad old days with these arguments, yeah, what do you know now? What would you tell yourself? Um, I would say marriage is it's the greatest um, revealer of insecurities. Um, I would say to myself, it's a, it's a mirror. So you, whatever you embody, whatever you show up as in the relationship, um, whoever you become in that relationship is a mirror for him and he will reflect that back to you. Um, And the only way to create a healthy environment is to... um, Make sure your mirror is as clean as possible and you're the best version of yourself. Um, and I, I don't think there's anything on the planet more than marriage that, that forces you to look in, in the mirror and to be the mirror and to become your best self. Wow. And what, what kind of a tip would you give to a woman who's who's listening right now and thinking, I'm having those toxic fights. We're having those arguments. My husband seems insecure and I want the kind of relationship Marvan is describing where he would do anything for me. He just wants me to be happy. He seems confident here and so much more than he did before. Where should she start? Um, I think the, the power of it's, it's really taking personal responsibility for who you are in the relationship and you know you can sit there and blame them until the rest for the rest of your life and it won't fix anything um it won't fix anything and the only way that you can bring about change is not not by telling them what to do not by teaching them not by uh, guiding them in the right direction and none of that works um, and the only way to to bring happiness into a marriage is to um, to figure out how you can be your own person and figure out how you can find the good in him and find what what you find desirable about him what you find positive about that person and grow and grow that in a really dedicated way yeah Yeah. this work means a lot to you doesn't it yeah yes and so and how um, go ahead yeah it means the world to me I just want I want everyone to feel like they can um, come on this journey and and f- and fix themselves that it's it's healing you're healing yourself yeah. but the but the the beauty the beauty of that is that 
you, that healing has a ripple effect on everyone around you. And that's a beautiful gift to give everyone, everyone that's in your life. Why would you want to do that? If you genuinely love the people around you, why wouldn't you want to give them that gift and yourself that gift? Yes, and you have uh, made a big investment in your training and development in this area. Uh, You you are a graduate of coach training. And uh, how has that changed you? Oh, wow. Um, I think that the coach training made me um, peel away even more layers of my self. So the layers of of being a victim, the layers of of um, being blaming everybody else for my problems, um, the layers of control that I developed in order to survive. Um, And the layers of mistrust, like I just found so much in my behaviour that that demonstrated I just didn't trust men in particular. In fact, you know, I have, you know, (laughs) even women (laughs) to a certain extent. And and that those trust issues really were, I had no clue they were there. I had no idea that I had those issues until I started to become a coach and I started to dive deeper into practicing the skills um, and and the intent behind the skills and getting into that mindset of letting go of someone's um, influence over my life, allowing them to take lead, be the leader um, and and having that um, grace and trust to get out of their way which is is very hard for me to do after 25 years of surviving on my own I'm really a survivor of adversity and I I was very used to being the driver of my own car and um controlling my destiny and to and to get married and hand over that destiny and trust someone else to manage and, and be the leader of, of mine and his life um, has been, uh, wow, a just phenomenal um, game changer for me. So freeing. I just feel free now instead of, instead of stressed and overwhelmed, I feel like there's a whole room full of freedom around me wherever I go. Did you ever think you'd be saying that? No, <laughs> not at all. Wow, not at all. Did, none of this was expected. I, it just everything came as a surprise to me all the way through from start to finish. Um, and it's still, I still am surprised every day just the value that you get as a human being out of just focusing on improving yourself and 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 then all the value you get back from um the gifts and the compliments and the help and the support that you receive as a result of becoming a new person is just like just the most amazing recognition um just all wrapped up in a bow and just given to you in return for all the hard work. So that's kind of where I'm where I'm at now, which is a beautiful place to be. It's it's beautiful. Well, Ravana, thank you so much for coming on and sharing this amazing story of transformation, of uh being in a second marriage that was breaking down to uh, not, not only saving that marriage, not only fixing it, but making it into something beautiful that everyone would want. Uh I think you probably inspired a lot of women today. I hope so. If you're wondering how to get started with fixing your relationship and making it shiny again, then you need a roadmap. Get six simple steps to follow that will set your relationship up for success. Discover three common mistakes that wives make trying to fix their relationship that just make things worse. When you download my free Adored Wife Roadmap, you can do that at getcherished.com. Go to getcherished.com now to get your roadmap in minutes. 
And now it's time for the Worst Relationship Advice of the Week Award. It's the Worst Relationship Advice of the Worst Relationship Advice. Yeah, it's the Worst Relationship Advice of the Worst Relationship Advice of the Week. And the advice that's making me cringe this week is to save your relationship by instituting a date night. I mean, I love the idea of having a hot date once a week. Don't get me wrong. Who wouldn't want that time alone to have deep conversations without the kids and maybe make out a little bit? That is a worthy desire. And if someone advises you to have a weekly date night as a way to fix your relationship when it's struggling, then it's practically your duty to say to your guy, hey, we should have a date night once a week. Maybe you'd even tell him to pull out his calendar and let's get it on the schedule, which if you think about it, is not super romantic. I mean, that's you telling him that he should spend time with you, which is not the same as him seeking out your company or looking into your eyes and having a deep conversation with you because he wanted to. But let's just say that you're a guy agrees to it. And he might, uh, you know, he might add, go on a date with wife to his list of chores, right? Between pay bills, you know, clean the garage. And nobody ever felt special and loved because someone checked the box next to go on date night. So if you're not exactly enjoying each other's company on that date night, I am not sure how going out for dinner and a movie would change that. I mean, I remember in the battle days when my husband and I would just have a tense night out instead of a tense night in, and that made me feel even more hopeless. But once I restored the emotional safety at our house, I didn't feel the need to institute a date night at all because my husband was always seeking out my company. He still does. He's always grabbing me at the waist, pull me in for a kiss just because I was passing him in the hallway. So. My mission was accomplished without instituting a date night. And the same can happen at your house when you restore the emotional safety. So the advice to go on a date night as a way to improve your marriage? Well, that is the worst relationship advice I've heard all week. Be sure to subscribe to the Empowered Wife podcast. Next week's show is going to be about the secrets to talking about sex and keeping it steamy and getting what you want in the bedroom. Today's fun fact is that there was no turning back from my life of crime when I was nine years old and my sister broke her arm right after I pushed her off the piano bench. Until we talk again, take good care of you.